they are saying, you are saying everybody is Brahman, but we are so imperfect, Brahman is perfect. So how do we believe that we are Brahman? Because it's very difficult, we have so many wrong things in us, wrong notions in us. But at the same time you say we are all Brahman and nothing less than Brahman. In fact, we are Brahman alone, everything else is a mithya. So how do I believe that it is not so? Rujvam bujangam iva pratibhasitam Like in a rope, a snake appears. And you think there is a snake and you get scared. And you think, my God, this snake is a poisonous one. Somebody next to you will say, I know this snake. This is a rattlesnake. The next fellow will start imagining, no, no, I think it's a cobra. A little, not well fed, I think that's why a little thin, but otherwise it's a cobra. It's not a rattlesnake. Third one will say, no, no, it's a viper for sure. Fourth one will say, something else, water snake. All have already started making theories about what that snake is and how poisonous it can be and how many seconds it will take to kill a human body. All imaginations have already begun. Scientists have started writing theories, left, right, center, evolution, Darwin, this, that, everything. On a snake, on a snake they are writing this theory, which is not there. What is there? A rope. But in the darkness, you thought, there is a snake and you started investigating the snake. Which one, which variety, what is the, this thing, that thing and set up a new research center, laboratory to investigate the snake. Now the next, some light comes on, let us say. And then snake disappears because there was never a snake, there was only a rope. Now the next sector of inquiry will start. Where did that snake go? Did he leave from the east, west, north, south, up, down? And then they will set up another set of investigation to search that snake which has gone away somewhere. What is all this effort you tell me? Is it not foolishness? It's ignorance only, right? In the ignorance all this is being done. Somebody saw the snake where there was no, no snake. Few people wrote the theories on which species of snake this is. And when the light was put on and the snake disappeared, a whole new investigation team started searching for the snake in the garden. And till today they are writing theories and explaining theories of which snake it was and where it went. The most probable way of going to, of this snake would be eastern direction. Why so? Because in the east direction, generally ant hills are there in our campus. So mostly he would have gone back to his home. Somebody said, no, 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 eastern direction, those are ant hills, there was never a snake over there. Anytime we went, we never found a snake. I think it would have gone in the western direction instead. Why? Because the slope is that way or with whatever. Water is on that side. There is a bush there, it's easy to hide. You keep writing theories and set up a whole team of investigators with microscopes or telescopes. But you will never find that snake because it never was. So this illusion that you are the body and that you are imperfect and that you have all these evils in you, our Vedanta straight away tells it that this is all illusion, impressions of your mind, which misunderstands things. Like in darkness, we misunderstand a rope for a snake. Like that you misunderstand that you are a body with all the imperfections. The moment you put on the Jnana Jyoti, the light of Vedanta, the truth will be revealed that you are Brahman only, you are not the body and the mind and all the imperfections that you imagine yourself to be. Then you will ask, okay, now I have become Brahman, but where is that imperfection gone? It's like searching for that snake, where the poison of the snake has gone. Poison was never there, you imagine that snake is there and therefore a poisonous snake is there. I am a bad boy, I am a bad girl, I am this, all this is an imagination. Because of imagination, you continue to keep behaving in the under imagination like the person who suspected a snake is, snake is still shivering over there. Why? Because he's imagined a snake. So he will say, why am I afraid? Because you imagine that snake is there. Why am I evil? Because you imagine you are the body. That's all is the reason. And body has to be appeased and pleased and done. Like the fear of the person is imaginary. Though person is suffering from the fear, shivering and getting scared. And suppose he has some aversion to the snakes. Now he starts dreaming of snakes. In the dream also snakes are coming. This has gone into his uh, mind so much. Like that this whole idea of your body, and we have senses and they have to be pleased and they have to be cared for. That is the only way of life. That is the only way to happiness. All these imaginations have settled in our mind so deep. 
that any amount of torture i throw and tell it is a rope it is a rope it is a rope you are saying yes swami it is a rope but where did the snake go is the next question you ask me so you agree i am brahman but what about my mind and all the senses what should i answer to you for that i have no answer for that because there is the question is invalid so there is no answer for that the answer to all the questions of life is you are brahman and brahman alone manifesting as this like the rope is manifesting like a snake there the snake does not exist rope alone exists likewise brahman alone exists you don't exist this is the essence of vedanta that is why brahma satyam jagan mithya jiva brahmaiva napara you are the brahman you are not the jagat it is illusion that you are the jagat male female young old and rich and poor and wealthy and all kinds of these are imaginations and in that imagination you think you are rich in that imagination you think you are poor good or bad like the imagination of the snake you are afraid nobody can do anything about it you have to realize it for yourself that there was never a snake it was only a rope you misunderstood therefore the fear and the frustration and anxiety once you get rid of this there is no anxiety whatsoever after that it is easy to say all these things but difficult to believe but you have to, nachiketa is believing nachiketa is believing when he has been told by yama that najayate amriyate va vispaschit so he is believing all these things that yes i am the one who is not born who is not dying then this body is being born body dies what about it that is not you that is what you have to conclude that is not you then mind where thoughts emerge and thoughts disappear anything that comes and goes is not you so thoughts also you discard mind also you discard what about my intelligence which is able to analyze things as good and bad and all see your intelligence also is coming and going based on the situation therefore that is also not you what am i then am i the experiences of happiness and sorrows in my life no because they also come and go the only thing that does not come and go always remains ajo nityam shashvato yam purano na hanyate hanyamane sharira the definition has been given now you have to fit the description to the definition everything else that comes and goes is born and it dies cannot be that truth is what yama has told nachiketa nachiketa is believing that so now yama has explained that think of your self as the indriyas and the body see indriyas and the bodies have their own ways they come and go so it means that doesn't fit the description next what indriya mana get into your mind indriyebhya para hi artha arthebhya param manaha mind now mind also has these thoughts coming and going it's some day sad some day happy some day excited some day dull so these are changes anything that has changes is not you all right throw this mind out next what now this mind is dependent on buddhi which actually decides everything so is that me it says no that is also you can't be that because that also comes sometimes it is sharp sometimes it is dull sometimes it is very clear sometimes it is confused so there are so many changes in the buddhi buddhi can't be you the intelligence is not you withdraw further then what else is left now oh i have experience ananda and ananda, dukha and all those experience also come and go that is also not you cut continue going inside then is lori says no i have a jivatma inside that is me then he says that you are almost getting there but this jivatma business is limitation but this is unlimited what we are talking about it is infinite and everywhere but you are saying this jivatma is within your body like the ratinam the traveler in the chariot so this also is some limitedness and therefore this can't be brahman because brahman is infinite now what else we should do he says okay let's go even further where did this jivatma come inside you from where did that electricity in the bulb come from it came from the wire therefore go further deep okay beyond the bulb lies a wire like that beyond my jivatma lies a mahan atma it is said great soul what is this great soul the interpretation to that is given as before jivatma came what that virat or hiranyagarbha was there that is the supreme greater than this so beyond our jivatma buddhi is the supreme highest the virata or hiranyagarbha because virata is the modification of hiranyagarbha hiranyagarbha is not manifested virata gets manifested in the same way now beyond that also something is there or not you have to ask because anything that has come out must go back ajonityah it was never born now virata is born 
Hiranyagarbha is born. Born means at least it has come out of something. But this is something. Na kutashchit na babu va kashchit. Na kutashchit it says. I have not come from anywhere. Nor anything is going to come out of me. Therefore there is some level beyond that you go. You go one more level beyond that. Now you find what? There is a thinking Brahman. Some sankalpa had happened. But then you say, Brahman's sankalpa is the reason why things have come out of it. So the sankalpa Brahman is also not the purest state. Because Nirguna Brahman, there is no changes. The one who thinks now can stop thinking the next moment. It means it has thought has come and thought has gone. But the Brahman's definition that it doesn't come and it doesn't go. So if a thinking Brahman means today is thinking Brahman, in the next moment it can be not thinking Brahman. Then there are two types of Gya in the same. So two types are not possible within Brahman. There is only one, Ekam. So now what shall we go? Go one more level deeper and realize the supreme, ultimate, original consciousness is Brahman which was not even thinking. So what was it? It was Asti. It was Asti, that's all. That is this nurture of the Brahman. And there is nothing more than that. It exists. This is the ultimate truth. Beyond that there is no truth. Sap Purusham, he says, calls the name as Purusham. Purusham means that which resides in all. So Purashaya, in the place it resides. It means in everything that ultimate supreme consciousness alone resides. That is the idea of Brahman. Sa kashtha, sa parangati. That is the highest, the ultimate end of everything. Beyond that there is nothing. Sa parangati. That is the ultimate destination. Beyond that there is nothing more to do, nothing more to go. So that's where you have to slowly, 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 slowly bring yourself in so that you realize that you are that Supreme Brahman and these vikaras in the body, these uh, excitements and depressions of the mind, these intelligence and dullness of the buddhi, these happinesses and sorrows of your chitta, all this is not you. These are all imp superimpositions on you. That's why these are imperfect. But if you go on asking who you truly are, then finally you reach a stage by this investigation of who am I and ultimately you will reach the stage of Supreme Brahman which is not even thinking, it simply is. This is the ultimate reality, this is the Supreme Reality. True, it is difficult to understand. So the next shloka will explain that yes, they agree that it is difficult to understand. Like Arjuna went and said, Shanchalami Mana Krishna, Pramadi Balvadranam. It is very difficult. Vayuriva. Sudushkaram. It is so difficult to control this mind like controlling the wind. And Krishna as a good teacher, he laughed because he knows that it is not so difficult to control this mind. But for a small child, give him four digit, multiply it by four digit, he will say it's impossible to multiply. But the grown up one will laugh and say, what is this in that? So like that Arjuna, Krishna too much you are asking me to control my mind and all is not possible. It's like controlling the wind. I, can, as, I as well will go and control the wind instead of controlling my mind. And Krishna being so compassionate, he knows it is not impossible. But how he says, Asamshayam Mahabaho, I know it's very difficult, no doubt about it, Arjuna. Like a good teacher. Asamshayam Mahabaho. What should you do then? Abhyasena tu kaunteya vairagyena chagrahyate. Abhyasa, practice. And vairagya, detach. What should you practice? This investigation you have to practice. Who am I? And what should you detach from? Whatever you are not, detach from that. First you thought, I am the body, the senses, I am seeing, tasting, smelling, touching, hearing. This is all I am. Then you investigated a bit, this doesn't fit the Brahman definition. So now you discarded it. I am not the body. Next, I am I the mind which observes through the body. Now oh, it comes and goes. Discard. Vairagya. Then come inside. Am I buddhi which thinks and analyzes? No, that also comes and goes. Discard. Then, am I the experiences of life of ananda and dukkha? No, they come and go. Discard. Am I the jivatma? How does jivatma come into this body? Where did it come from? It came from somewhere, it is going somewhere. That is not the definition of Brahman. It doesn't come and go. Discard jivatma. Then where Hiranyagarbha is the higher thing I know of. Is, is, am I that? But Hiranyagarbha is born of something. But I am not supposed to be born of anything. Discard Hiranyagarbha. Go under step deeper. Am I the thinking Brahman which thought of creating? Thinking Brahman can become not thinking Brahman. Means there are two that cannot be true. Go back further. 
finally I go and reach the ultimate supreme Brahman who doesn't think, doesn't talk, doesn't touch, doesn't taste, doesn't smell. All these descriptions are coming in the coming shlokas. So this is the investigation, the ekatmya pratyaya sara path. Take that one truth and further, further, further penetrate and deeply investigate. Is this not scientific? Tell me, scientists do this only. They take a gross thing and then they split it and split it and split it and finally go, go and find out what it is basic building block, what is the basic unit of that from which this has emerged. And then they go back and establish there are elements with which it is made and those elements are made of their atoms. And in atoms these are the protons and the neutrons, the electrons and whatever quarks and they have a certain behavior in certain situation. And that's how they make theories of chemistry and physics that if these quarks or these protons come anywhere close to these other protons of the other element, this is the reaction that's going to happen or whatever beta decay will happen, fusion will happen, fusion will happen if you provide some energy. All these things are nothing but discoveries later. The phenomena existed even before scientists told about it. So like this, you have to do investigation. This is the essence of Vedantic wisdom. So we also learned yesterday that eight, eight ways we go down. And now I have split this into, though actually seven only are mentioned in these two shlokas, just to make your memory better, I have put it as eight ways of going up. What are the eight ways of going down? Dhyayato, Vishayan Punsa. Think of sense objects, then Sangasteshu Pajayate, attachment to them starts developing. I must have it. You saw the new advertisement somewhere and that's it. The new model has come. It's far better. And how will they pay the credit card bill? That we will see tomorrow. Live in the present. Swipe the card and then we will break our head later. What to do with such kind of mindset? Dhyayato vishayan punsa, sangas teshu pachayate. And sangat sanjayate kama, desires come. I have to get it now because attachment has come. Kama krodo bhi jayate. And if you don't get it, you get very angry, you take to wrong ways, adharma you do, aniti, anachara. You get into all these things to get what you want. And what is the result of all this? Krodat Bhavati Sammoha, you get deluded, do all wrong things. Sammoha Smriti Vibrama, that basic knowledge of good and bad disappears from you. Smriti Brahmshat Buddhi Nasho, Buddhi Nashat Prashati. You come to your ultimate ruin because of this kind of thinking. These are the eight steps of downfall in human life. Starting with thinking about the Indriyarthas, then getting into Indriyas, then mind which develops desire, Buddhi that develops frustration and anger and gets destroyed at the end. So this is the outward eight steps. Now eight steps to liberation is what? Just the reverse. From the Indriya and the Athabya, now start going inside. You went outside, now start going inside. Reverse methodology. You withdraw from the senses, come to the sense faculties, Shabda, Sparsha, Rupa, Rasagandha. Withdraw from that, get into the mind, Manas. Withdraw from the mind, get into the Buddhi. Withdraw from the Buddhi, get into the Jivatma Bhava that God resides in me. Withdraw from the Jivatma Bhava, you get into the Jnanatma Bhava, that ultimate higher supreme knowledge that you have. That is, I have called it Mahata or you call it Virat or Hiranyagarbha, whichever way. And then from there you come to unmanifest Ishwara, Avyakta, he says. Mahata Parama Avyaktam. Because he is thinking Brahman, he has not yet manifested as matter. He is only thinking. And Avyakta Purushat Param. So Purusha is the ultimate, the supreme Brahman who does not think, does not say, does not do just stays, just is. That is the ultimate reality. So you withdraw, withdraw and these eight steps you can go within and become Brahman, which was declared by Yama maybe 10,000 years ago. And yet they are valid even today. That is why I said Paravidya is valid at all times, at all places, in all situations. Aparavidya, you have to keep upgrading yourself. Stenographers have no job today. Typists have no job today. Because computers have taken over everything. Uh, photo films were there, now all digital. A day will come, it may change into some other technology. Everything is changing in the changing world. You have to keep upgrading your knowledge. But Paravidya does not change. It was valid then, it is valid today. It will be valid any number of years from now. These basic fundamental truths of spirituality are completely valid at all times. To people of all religions, see we are not talking about any God here. Did we talk about any God here? A Christian God or a Hindu God or a Muslim God? We didn't. We just said your Supreme Consciousness. Can you dispute that? 
No, I am not having this, any consciousness. Can you dispute that? You are having consciousness, otherwise how are you even aware that you are having consciousness? As our Vidyaranya Swami says, telling that Brahman does not exist is like telling with your own tongue that tongue does not exist. I don't have a tongue, you are telling. That's how foolish it will be to say consciousness does not exist. Yes, whether Jesus or the God on the heaven exists or not, you can have your doubts. Whether Vishnu, Shiva or Shakti, who is superior, what is the truth, you can have your doubts. Whether, whether Allah is a form and no form or what is that, you can have your doubts. But how can you have a doubt that you exist? So it's that real, this consciousness is that real. At the end of it is only consciousness in which we experience the world, in which we think, behave, act, emote. Everything is within that consciousness only. Therefore consciousness is the ultimate. Pragnanam Brahma, it is what Aitreya Upanishad finally concludes after telling you the whole story of creation. Pragnanam Brahma, it says and concludes. So the twelfth shloka, it simply says, Esha Sarveshu Bhuteshu, Guru Atmana Prakashate, Drishyate Tvagraya Buddhya, Sukshmaya Sukshma Darshibihi. Therefore, it says, This one, Esha, this one means that Supreme Consciousness, Sarveshu Bhuteshu, in all the beings it is hiding, Gudho Atma. Gudha means very secretive. In a secret place it is hiding. It, why it's called secret? Because it is not known, it is not seen, it is not heard. It cannot be touched or tasted or smelt because of its nature that it is. It is hiding, therefore na prakashate. So therefore it is not known. And because it cannot be tasted, touched, smelt, whatever from the Indriya's point of view, people think it does not exist. Then drishyate tvagraya buddhya. Who sees it, drishyate, who can see it, though it's hiding in deep place. So you can't see it with your eyes. Seeing here means, remember para, pasyanti, madhyama, vaikari. So pasyanti is drishyate here. In your vision, how can you visualize it? Tva agraya buddhya, the one who is buddhi is focused, one-pointed buddhi. Not a scattered buddhi running behind too many things, thoughts, desires. Not that buddhi, which buddhi is completely focused on this. Sukshmaya, sukshma darshibihi. Because it is so subtle that only a sukshma darshi who has a very subtle vision alone can figure it out, alone can make it out, alone can find it. For ordinary people it is not to be found. For the people with a scattered mind, that is why it says, na virito duscharitaha, na shantaha, na ashanta manaso. All these people cannot attain this because their buddhi is not sharp, their buddhi is not focused. If your knife is sharp, one shot it will cut the apple. If knife is blunt, then what are you going to do? Keep rubbing on the apple like this. Even an apple doesn't get cut with a knife. Why? Because a knife has no sharpness. A sharp buddhi. And how did this sharp buddhi come? Because you didn't use this knife to cut all and sundry things. Once a man was, it seems, shaving and he said, what happened to my shaving blade? It gave gave me cuts. Something is wrong with my blade. I think it has become old. Let me change it. So the wife came and told, no, no, the blade is very good and uh, you simply don't know how to shave yourself. He says, for 40 years I've been shaving myself. It's not possible that I don't know. Definitely the blade is at fault. She's, it is not sharp anymore. She says, no, blade is very sharp. Just now I sharpened the pencil of our children. <laughs> that's how sharp it is, she's saying. Oh, that's precisely why it's no more sharp to shave his beard. This is what we do with our buddhi. That's what I tell, using our intelligence for lower things. Ahara, Nidra, Bhai, Maituna will make it blunt. The sharpness of buddhi disappears. It's like using the shaving blade to sharpen the pencils. And after that, the blade's sharpness is gone. Now, when you really want to shave yourself, you're getting all cuts and bruises because it's not shaving properly. Same thing when your buddhi is sharp. Then you are able to find Brahman in you, ever around you, in everything. But when you have used your buddhi, which is meant to shave, for sharpening pencils, which has another instrument, an eraser is there, you can use that. Why should you use a shaving blade to sharpen the pencil? It's a waste of a shaving blade. It's wasted the blade now. Likewise, you have wasted your intelligence by running behind this ahara, nidra, bhaya, maituna. That's it. What shall we eat? What shall we not eat? Last, day, last week only we ate that. 
where to go for our vacation entertainment which movie to see which to avoid which friends to meet uh, which job to take up our whole buddhi goes into this only so where is where will that buddhi sharpness remain now when you really want to investigate into brahman there is no sharpness left in the buddhi and therefore you will never find brahman you will become a secret to you though it is very much within you you will still not find it so sukshmaya sukshma darshi bhi how agraya buddhya first you should have agra buddhi means agraya means sharp buddhi pointed buddhi not scattered thinking of too many things and also want to speak of brahman not possible that's why yamai vesha vrunute he only wants this and nothing else to him he becomes available why because his buddhi is become one pointed focus on brahman and brahman alone not thinking of anything else and then what happens sukshma darshi bhi as he keeps on doing this activity he gets better and better and better at it because we are moving from sthula gross to the sukshma from the indriya and indriyarthas we are moving into mana buddhi and further into jivatma and even further into hiranyagarbha and further into avyakta purusha and then into purusha it means we need a sharper vision like to see a thing which is very far you need a telescope or the thing which is very sukshma you need a microscope like that to see this brahman you need a special faculty of vision sukshma buddhi vision why sukshma darshi bhi that is how your vision should get refined but if you are watching everything else all the time where is the time to pay attention to these things which is so subtle therefore all these master the mind was you will understand now why it was all being taught because that will bring you to this stage where your mind gets decluttered it is not shaking and shivering and uh, distracted by so many things so behind that the buddhi does not have to analyze too many things when does uh, mind re- is restless when decisions are not made should i choose this or should i choose that should i eat this or should i eat that when mind is chanchala but once the buddhi decides eat this leave that mind is at peace so buddhi is the reason why mind is in shaky state and mind is the reason why buddhi is scattered both are reason for each other student is miserable because teacher is like that teacher says my students are like that what can you do about it so like this mind keeps grasping things from the indriyas nice to see nice to hear taste smell touch and keeps telling the buddhi shall we eat this shall we go there shall we have this and buddhi has to sit and make decisions last week only we ate that last time month only we went there last year only we went for that vacation so buddhi is busy all the time doing so mind and buddhi both are not at neither the buddhi is sharp nor the mind is sukshma nothing happens that's why first withdraw from the indriya and indriya arthebya that's when your mind will have lesser options buddhi will have lesser work to do unnecessary work in that way buddhi will have more sharpness because it is not been used for anything else other than like shaving blade has been used for shaving then you will be able to use it correctly to find this subtle truth of brahman that is hiding within you otherwise you will be going in circle paryanti mudah